this. At this time, we're going to hear a talk from Joyce Craywick. Let me tell you a little bit about Joyce. She's a small business owner and resident of Kernersville. Uh, she's also uh, is the North Carolina Grassroots Coordinator for Freedom Works, an organization that advocates for less government and more freedom. In 2003, she was elected from 800,000 members as the National Activist of the Year. Joyce is currently serving as the Grassroots Activism Chair of the North Carolina Federation of Republican Women. She is also immediate past legislative chair and has served the new membership director and regional vice president for the NCFRW. Joyce is a former president of the Forsyth County Re Republican Women and has served on several committees on the National Federation of Republican Women. She contributes to a number of publications, writing about politics and current news events. Her opinion articles have been published in papers around the state and several online publications. She also has a blog called Mouth from the South, is married and has two grown daughters. Joyce Craywick. So before I forget, I want to say thank you to Patty Curran for organizing this rally. Thank you, Patty. And I love to tell folks, I'm the protest queen. But back in the 60s, when all of my friends were protesting, I didn't get involved. I was busy with my family, doing what families do. But when I hit my 60s, my goal, a protest every week, at least one. So the 60s didn't get me, but in my 60s, I am protesting every opportunity that I get. So this is my protest for this week. I want to tell you a quick story. A Sunday school teacher had her class drawing pictures of their favorite Bible story, and one little boy drew a picture, and she said, well, what does that represent? And he said, that's the flight to Egypt. And she said, okay, well, I recognize this must be Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus, but who's this fourth person? And he said, oh, that's Pontius, the pilot. <laughs> so the Jews were looking for the promised land. We know that they were blessed, their ancestors were blessed with their promised land. We are blessed in the land that we live in. We are blessed to be Americans. And I want to show you my t-shirt. Community organizer for the Constitution. <laughs> we are all community organizers now, and we are all Catholics now. Because we are standing up for everyone's religious freedoms. And I'm going to tell you, I know many of you have heard the story about Pastor Niemoller, and I know you remember him. He said, they came for the trade unionist, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a trade unionist. They came for the communist, I didn't speak up, I wasn't a communist. They came for the Jews, I wasn't a Jew, I didn't speak up. And then they came for me. And there was nobody left to speak up for me. And that's exactly what's happening. We have been going through this series of divide and conquer. Religious liberty has been under attack for a long time. This isn't new. It has been under attack started uh, full force in 1963 when prayer was taken out of schools and said you're no longer uh, allowed to have school-led prayer. And it has been non-stop ever since. But this health care mandate has really awakened a sleeping giant. And I want to say, many of you here went on the giant protest that we did, uh, Freedom Works sponsored, in Washington, D.C. to fight this mandate. We knew at the time it was unconstitutional. Never in the history of this country have Americans been mandated to purchase a product simply because we live and breathe the air in this fine country. We knew that was not constitutional. But I'm so glad and I'm so thankful that the Catholic Church has taking the heavy load right now by suing this administration, by standing up, raising awareness about this issue, this is what uh, Thomas Jefferson wrote. To compel a man to furnish contributions of money for the propagation of opinions which he believes is sinful, that is tyrannical. 
Don't you think T.J. knew a little bit about the Constitution? I think he did. I tell you what, I think he knew more about it than Kathleen Sebelius, the Secretary of Health and Human Services. I think he knew a little bit about that. But religious freedom has been the bedrock of democracy in this country. And it is up to all of us to stand up. If you're not willing to stand up for somebody else, even if this is not something that you really care about, you've got to stand up for every single freedom because they will come for yours. I promise you, they will come for yours. The more we have allowed them to take, the more they will take. And when anyone's liberty is violated, ours is violated. Now, we talked about that big rally on 9-12 where many of us went to D.C. and had that great march. And it was absolutely awesome. It was the most wonderful experience. And you see what it got us. The president said, I don't care if you bring two million people up here. Basically, he said, to hell with you. I'm going to do this anyway. Well, he has awakened a sleeping giant. And I am so glad to see all of you here today. Do you remember when Nancy Pelosi said, we have to pass this bill so we can see what's in this bill? Well, that was pretty stupid to start with. I mean, that should have been a dead giveaway. And we are still finding out what's in that bill. In that bill, 2,295 times in that health care package, you find the secretary shall, the secretary may, or the secretary determines. Now, how dangerous is that? How dangerous is that? And as Christians, we don't give a lot of thought to obeying those things that are in contrast to our beliefs. These are our two directories, our Holy Bible, for most of us here, and our Constitution. And those are the things that we live by. We live by. And this health care mandate, make no doubt about it, you ain't seen nothing yet. We just found out about this in January. It actually came down in August, but we didn't find out about it until January. 2,700 pages. I'm betting you nobody yet has read the whole thing. So thank you all for standing up for it. On the way over here, i got to tell you this. I heard this song on the radio that said, I ain't as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. That old country song. Well, many of you are in that same boat with me. We love our country. We know that the freedoms that we have enjoyed are not going to be there for future generations if we don't stand up now. So I think 2012 is our chance to do what we do as good as we once was one more time. And uh, I can't protest as good as I used to, but I can do it one more time. 2012 is the time. I know this is a nonpartisan event, but I'm not nonpartisan in this event, in this race. I'm going to tell you. We've got one candidate who said, to hell with you, I'm going to pass this anyway. We've got another candidate who says, I'm going to repeal it the first day I'm in office. Well, I know which one I'm going to be working for. And I want to invite every one of you to work with us to help us remove Kathleen Sebelius from her health human services directorship and get some people there. Our duty is to elect godly men and women who will follow the Constitution. And I thank you all for doing that. And I encourage you to sign up. We have some sign-up sheets for those that are here for the rally that want to be informed about this. I have some sign-up sheets if you want to volunteer for a campaign. We're going to be working all over the state, and we need help everywhere we can get it because it is not going to be easy. I know you've seen a lot of, a lot of excitement lately, and the, the marriage amendment was wonderful, and we got 60% of the vote. But I will tell you that of many of those folks who voted for the marriage amendment will not be voting for the conservative candidates. That is a given. So we need the people elected who will stand up for the Constitution, who will say your religious liberties are not something that can be taken away. Thank you all so much for being here.